would you invest in Paytm's IPO knowing all the information that I've shared with you? My answer is no, that I would not do it. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I have a very interesting case study for you on Paytm and before starting the case study, I have two questions for you. So please make sure that you answer these two questions. So the first question is that who do you think Paytm is competing with? Are they competing with Google Pay? Are they competing with Amazon? Are they competing with Razor Pay? Are they competing with any other company? Please mention it. The second question for you is that are you going to invest in Paytm's IPO? I will give you my answer. The answer is no. So I'm going to give my analysis on this case study. So please watch it. Please make notes. I will talk about a lot of business lessons along the way. So you'll get to learn a lot. And just a humble request that if you like the content, please press the like button. That would mean a lot to me. It would help out the video with the YouTube algorithm and it would encourage me to continue shooting case studies. So with that said, let's get started. So there are four things that I'm going to explain on this case study. The first is that I will quickly take you through Paytm's business model and how is it that Paytm is making money. Second point, I'm going to talk a little bit about that what is the real strategy of Paytm going forward. So what are the key areas that Paytm is going to focus on? Third, we are going to take a look at key challenges that Paytm is going to face and who are they actually competing against? Are they competing against WhatsApp, Amazon or any other company? And finally, I'm going to talk about Paytm's IPO and the way ahead. So first and foremost, let us try to understand how is it that Paytm is making money and what are its major revenue streams? Now, it is currently operational across six broad domains. So let me take you through it very, very quickly. So first and foremost, we understand very, very categorically what Paytm wallet is, right? So Paytm literally started out as a wallet, right? It was a place where we could store money, transact money. So that is what Paytm wallet is. And this has been up until now the main core business of Paytm. Now, how does Paytm make money from this Paytm wallet? Very simply that you and I, when we store money in Paytm, we don't get any return on that money. But Paytm invests that money in overnight liquid funds and variety of other instruments to generate a certain rate of return for itself. That is one. Second is that it makes certain commissions, both from merchant side, when you're interacting and giving payments to merchants and on the customer side, also. So when we transfer the amount from our Paytm wallet to our bank account, there is a certain charge. So Paytm also makes commission on that. So this is the first key business model and I'm sure that many of us are already familiar with it. So I'll not spend too much time here. Paytm recently also started something called as Paytm Mall, right? Now on Paytm Mall is essentially a competitor to Amazon. It's trying to sell literally everything. That is the eventual goal. Now, the reason why Paytm would have entered in this business is because Paytm is Alibaba backed, right? Now, Alibaba is the massive e-commerce site in China. In India, Amazon has already grown very big. So Paytm becomes a proxy for Alibaba to come and compete in the Indian market. So that is primarily the reason why Paytm Mall has been launched in a way, right? So this is the second business model. And if you're familiar with Amazon's business model, this equation for Paytm would be very clear to you. So this is the second business line. Now, the third business line is the recharge one. Now, on recharge, what happens is that there are certain recharges. For example, if you are charging a Jio phone or Airtel phone, then Paytm makes money by charging commission to Airtel or Jio. So very simple business model here, right? Now, moving on to the fourth part, there is also something called as payment solutions. Now, payment solution essentially means that, for example, if you are a merchant, if you are a small merchant and if you don't have any facility in terms of accepting payment via UPI or via Google Pay, etc., then you can create a QR code. Now, if a small merchant uses that QR code, it has to give a certain amount of money to Paytm as commissions. Now, this is the fourth business line for Paytm. Now, Paytm also entered very recently into digital gold. In India, there is fascination to invest in gold. So, Paytm partnered with a few firms and what it allows buyers to do is that buyers can buy virtual gold and store it in their Paytm wallet, so to say. Right? So, this is the function of digital gold. Now, this digital gold business allows you to buy gold also and sell gold also and Paytm in the middle would be making commissions. So this is again a commissions based business. Now this is the mother of all commissions based business which is cross selling. So Paytm is trying to enter the mutual fund market, stock broking, insurance, everything. Now here they will partner with a bunch of companies, right? Be it insurance firms, mutual fund houses, etc, etc. And they will start charging commission on the services which are being sold through the Paytm app. Now, there are a few things that you need to notice here. Now, first and foremost, Paytm is both a B2C business to consumer and a B2B business, right? What do I mean by that? For example, Starbucks. Now, Starbucks is a B2C because it's selling directly to consumer, right? So it's a B2C business. But Paytm actually makes money directly from consumers also. For example, Paytm wallet and 
merchants also how merchants for example paytm solutions right so they are a both b2b and b2c business that's the first key point that you need to note down the second key point that you need to notice about paytm is that it is a very vast business and paytm is entering into vast array of businesses and this is the reason why i said earlier that paytm is a very confused fintech company right now now the third thing that you need to notice right now is that paytm has a very high expense the reason is that it is spending money in terms of acquiring customers here and it is spending insane amount of money acquiring businesses or merchants here so it is burning the candle from both ends so it is spending insane amount of money every single year so i will put up the chart somewhere here and here you can notice that number one paytm is still a net loss making company right it is making massive losses number two its revenues are not going up in fact it has come down number three its expense are still very very high despite it cutting down the expense by 40 percent literally this year so these are some basic fundamentals and financials you must understand and you must understand and notice the point that the reason why it's a high expense company is that they don't have a singular business strategy they are operating across everywhere they are trying to compete with everyone be it amazon be it razor pay be it pay you be it google pay be it phone pay they are trying to compete with literally everyone and in that race they are not being effective in terms of acquiring these customers effectively by spending money and they are not being effective in terms of acquiring businesses or merchants very effectively right so the amount of capital that flows into these businesses that is being burned at a massive rate and this is the reason why that despite not growing any revenues this year their entire focus was to just bring down the cost so even paytm understands that its business model is extremely complex and it is trying to simplify so here are some key statements that i will read out for you and i will show you two things here one is key statements that have been made by the founder of paytm and i will walk you through the cost cutting structure that paytm is following now if you take a look at the 2020 numbers for paytm you will quickly see that the marketing and promotional spends were slashed by 63 percent in 2020 by paytm 63 percent Number two, the advertising spend was cut down by 28%. And number three, the staff expenses actually jumped by 30%. Now, if you just analyze this cost structure, what is it that you would get out of it? You will simply understand that Paytm is ramping up its hiring, but at the same time, it is cutting down cost on wide variety of other factors. Now, please ask yourself the question that why is it that they have cut down the expenses? The reason is very simple, that Paytm has been a consistent loss-making company since its inception. Now it is going to go for an IPO later this year and of course it needs to rationalize its cost. You might have watched my case study on Zomato. Zomato again is doing a similar book cleaning exercise where they are trying to cut down the cost, increase revenue, so on and so forth and trying to project profitability. Paytm is doing the same exercise now. But despite cutting cost, unlike Zomato, Paytm is still a loss making company. Zomato actually turned profitable this year but Paytm is still a net loss making company even this year. Now the second key point that you need to notice through this cost structure is very simple that the focus of Paytm has moved away from giving discounts, cashbacks and getting into that customer acquisition race. They are moving away from B2C things and now they are moving to B2B things. They are focusing more on the merchant side. Now here is a statement that was given that we launched an all-in-one QR in the beginning of the year which allowed merchants to remove all the clutter from the desk. It is the only single QR which can take wallet, card, UPI payments. There has been very good acceptance and traction for this. Now if you combine the fact that Paytm is cutting down its cost structure everywhere else and focusing on hiring people who can go out and start acquiring more and more merchants, Plus, it is offering more and more merchant conveniences. It is very clear that going forward, Paytm strategy is merchant acquisition, not customer acquisition. It is trying to win in the B2B game, not B2C game. Now, if you ask yourself the question that, hey, is Paytm actually winning in this merchant acquisition game? I would want you to take a look at this particular chart. Now here you can clearly see that so from financial year 18 to 19, it grew its merchant base from 7 million to 12 million. So this was a jump of approximately how many percent? Approximately 70 percent. Now if you take a look at the growth data of merchants from financial year 20 to 21, by how much has the merchant onboarding grown by? So it has only grown by 25 percent. 4 divided by 16 into 100, that gives you 25 percent. 
So from a time where it was growing at a rapid rate of 70%, now it has come down to 25%. And this is on an area where Paytm itself has admitted that they want to focus on growing their merchant business. And if the growth has been slow here, then these are troubling signs for the company. Now second and more qualitative way that you can understand about whether or not merchants are going to sign up with Paytm and is going to help them, you need to understand how the merchant psychology would work. Now the merchant category can be segregated into two parts and let me explain this via an example. So let's assume that I'm a small shopkeeper and I have a small business to run and I sell normal household items such as dal, chawal, atta, ghee, all that stuff. Now, what type of help would I be expecting from these big players? One, I would be expecting back-end help. For example, if I need to do my basic accounting, then I have companies like Khata Book that can help me in doing that. The second option would be that, hey, I would want to partner with retailers like Amazon who can get my product or more of my product to consumers, which is a front-end logistics play. So, Paytm is somewhere stuck in the middle. It's trying to compete with everyone. It's trying to compete with Amazon also. It's on the flip side, it's trying to compete at the back end also with companies like Khata, Book, Razer Pay, etc, etc. So, for Paytm, it becomes a multiple battle that they are trying to fight at the same time. Now, this brings us to an interesting section where we'll try to uncover whom exactly is Paytm trying to compete with. Now, Mr. Sharma was asked a bunch of questions around whom they are competing against and these were some of his classic responses. So, he was asked point blank that do you see a threat from WhatsApp? So he said that we decided not to pursue P2P money transfer, which means that at one stage they were also trying to do that. So we decided not to pursue P2P money transfer, which is what WhatsApp does. We want to focus more on the merchant payments. This ties into the previous section that I was speaking, that Paytm is focusing on merchants. We have stopped spending money on P2P since the last two quarters and WhatsApp is all about P2P. So I agree on two fronts that number one, that Paytm is focusing extensively on merchants now. It's trying to streamline its business. That's one. Second, it is not trying to compete against WhatsApp because that itself is a losing battle for Paytm. Therefore, it went into that business line but got out very quickly as soon as it realized that WhatsApp was getting into this domain with fierce strength. Now second, let's try to analyze that, hey, is Paytm trying to compete with Amazon? and what are its game plan there. So Mr. Sharma was asked that what plans do you have to scale up your operations to a level where you can compete with top e-commerce players. His response was that if they stop spending money recklessly, only then we can compete with them. But we have the money and a robust business model. We have been able to build a legitimate marketplace and it has done very well for us. Now, first and foremost, I slightly disagree because Paytm has been an extremely irresponsible company in terms of burning money. Same to Amazon and I think that goes into the nature of the e-commerce business. Now here is a news article that I will quickly link here. It categorically says and these are the numbers for 2018-19 because the numbers were very clear that in 2018 major players Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal and Paytm Mall have registered losses of INR 10,879 crores. Now you might ask me at this stage that he Akshat, do you think that all these companies whether it's Paytm, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Flipkart have they lost their mind? Why are they burning so much cash? So you need to understand the fact that a big company like Amazon or Flipkart, what they are currently getting into is they are trying to become the one-stop shopping destination for majority of the households in India. For example, I tend to only buy from Amazon. I don't even go to Flipkart and check prices now. Whatever is there on Amazon, I'll just go and buy it because I'm so habitual of buying stuff on Amazon. I'm sure that that is the case with many of you as well, that we will get habitual to buying on a certain portal be it Amazon, be it Flipkart, be it Paytm Mall, and we will continue to use that over and over again. That is literally the first step for these big players to get you hooked to a habit and become a one-stop solution. So that is step one. Step two is that once you get ingrained in terms of buying from Amazon, then Amazon starts high selling products at the back end. For example, you might have observed something called as Amazon Basics. That is the homegrown brand of Amazon. Once they start replacing these high end products, their margins shoot up. And that is the point at which these companies might become very profitable and would gain massive profitability going forward there. So this is actually a massive golden nest for company whoever can win in this race. But for the time being, this is a losing proposition for a company like Paytm, which is literally bleeding money from any vertical it is getting into and it is playing a very confusing game. Now you might say that, hey Akshat, why do you say that Paytm is such a confused company? I will tell you why. So let me ask you this, that what do you know Amazon for? You would say that, hey, Amazon is a very good logistics play. In the moment I order my items, I get the items at a very quick rapid speed. So essentially what you're trying to say is that Amazon has a very good logistics management play. In fact, if you take a look at their prime membership, what are they focusing on? They don't want you to watch just videos. 
the objective of Prime is very quick delivery. That is the USP. By focusing on Prime, that becomes another acquisition strategy for Amazon. Now, Paytm does not have any such strategy. So it will lose the logistics management game compared to Amazon. Now, if I ask the same question about Paytm, what is it exactly that Paytm is trying to do? You would say that Paytm is trying to build a mega app, right? They are literally trying to compete against Khata Book also. They are trying to compete against Google Pay also. They are trying to compete against Flipkart and Amazon also. So they are trying to compete against everyone. Now this brings us to the final section of this video discussion. And here is a very important question that I would like to ask you. Would you invest in Paytm's IPO knowing all the information that I've shared with you? My answer is no, that I would not do it. Not because of the fact that Mr. Vijay Shekhar Sharma is not a good businessman. He is a brilliant businessman. He has built a billion dollar enterprise. Of course, he knows what he is doing. But unfortunately, Paytm has gotten to a point where it is fighting too many wars, very unprofitability. Now you might say that, hey Akshat, you know what? Mr. Vijay Shekhar Sharma is a visionary and I'm sure that he has a way forward as to how to make Paytm profitable. So there is a very interesting statement that I would like to read out what Mr. Vijay Shekhar Sharma spoke in one of his interviews. He said, that in the fintech journey, we are just gathering ingredients now and have not even started cooking. He believes that the fintech revolution in India is not fast food but gourmet meals. We don't even have an appetizer yet. So essentially what he's trying to say is that, hey, you know what? I'm just collecting ingredients. I'm just going and experimenting with a bunch of businesses. And then I'm going to figure out how to monetize it profitably. Now, as an Indian, I'm very proud that entrepreneurs are taking massive risks and building new things, which is absolutely critical for an economy. But as an investor in an IPO, if I look at the fundamentals, I'm just trusting one person and his vision too much without any historic backing as to generating profitability for its shareholders. So for that reason, I would not be investing in this IPO, but very happy to hear your counter arguments. What do you think about this? And again, very humble request that please like and comment. Please subscribe to the channel. That would give me a lot of boost in terms of shooting these type of case studies. Thank you so much and I will see you on the next video.